Hi everyone, my name is Corey Dow and I'm a technical marketing engineer with HPE Aruba Networking. Today we're going to cover an exciting new update with AOS CX 10.14.1000. The feature is called BGP over GRE tunnels with IVRL. Okay, so let's dive a little bit deeper into the feature details. Uh, so again, this feature is called BGP over GRE tunnels with inter VRF route leaking or IVRL. Uh, known also in the industry, if you are looking at other vendor solutions, it's typically called VRF aware GRE tunneling. Uh, and in this case, uh, we provide the support with selective route leaking, and you'll see what that means in a few minutes. So for the platform support, so we released this uh, only on the 8325 and the 10K initially. Uh, it was requested in the data center. Uh, these this feature set could also apply to the campus products, uh, but at this time there are no plans to uh, release on the campus products. And you can see that the, the release, uh, as we mentioned, is 10.14.1000 that provides this feature set. So, and what does this feature do? So it, it supports multi-tenancy in the data center environments and provides capability for a provider network or transport VRF to be used in the underlay with multiple tenant VRFs to be used in the overlay. And prior to 10.14.1000, all GRE interfaces, loopbacks, and IPv4, IPv6 networks needed to be included in the same VRF. And now that's no longer the case. So as you can see in this diagram here, we have three tenants, tenant, tenants A, B, and C, uh, having each different VRFs. You see the green VRF here, VRF1, VRF2, and then VRF3. So now with 10.14.1000, we also have a transport VRF, uh, as you can see in the, the config snippet here for the tunnel configuration. Uh, and so you can see we, we, we specify in the tunnel um, the, the GRE uh, tunnel type and then also the attachment to the, the overlay. And now you can see we have the transport VRF is actually in the underlay. So this so the source and destination IP addresses are actually in the default VRF. And so that's kind of what this picture uh, highlights here is that we have these these destination IPs in the default VRF, but then they're also leaked across to the, each of the tenant VRFs, as you see kind of pictured here in the diagram. And then BGP sessions are established across these GRE tunnels to a, a destination. In this case, you can see we've got each of the VRFs it's, are being transported across the IPv4 network to an external device here. In this case, we just pictured a firewall that's some of the use cases that we see for uh, this deployment are firewalls. So that's what's represented in, in this case. And you can see we've got different uh, autonomous systems here for BGP 65100 for one tenant, 200 for another, and 300 for yet a third tenant VRF. And why this feature is important is some managed service providers wanted the ability to keep the underlay networking shared among the tenants yet still get the segmentation that they needed with the tenant VRS via BGP. We do have a number of customer deals that are, are riding on, on this feature being provided in this release. And so the default VRF provides the underlay for the shared infrastructure, just like it would in the VXLAN architecture. Uh, there are point-to-point -point peerings with each of the leaf nodes and the corresponding uh, spine nodes. And the loopbacks, loop X, as you see here, an example for uh, LEAF1, so source IP1111 and destination IP2222 are loopbacks distributed in the underlay using OSPF. And as I mentioned already, the transport VRF identifies the egress point for the tunnel within the tunnel configuration. And then the destination loopbacks are then leaked using IVRL uh, from the default VRF to the tenant VRFs dynamically using route target imports and exports. And we'll see that in the configuration in a few moments. And worth noting as well, the BGP pairing in updates happen with the tunnel IP addresses. So as for example, the uh, in this setup, so we've got the, the transport VRF default and then the IP address for the tunnel is 10.1.1.1. So the peering between this device and, and a, uh, another device, say here at the top of the diagram, would be that on that same network. So like, for example, 100.1.1.2 would be a tunnel interface uh, for, the, for the BGP sessions. And some configuration notes, as, as you see here, so each tunnel loopback source IP address, it must be unique across the tunnel overlay VRS, uh, so you can't have uh, this source IP referenced, if you had a, sec a second VRF here, say call called VRF2, you couldn't also uh, source that same IP address. It would have to have a unique IP address 
sourcing that. But if it was in the same VRF going to a different tunnel, uh, then that would be fine. So this could be shared as long as uh, the tunnel is going to a different destination, you can still use that same source IP. And as for the use cases, so the primary use case we can imagine uh, would be a shared physical data center where multiple tenants occupy the same data center. And some of which as well, like so VX land tunneling is newer than GRE. And in some cases, the firewall may not support VX land. So GRE uh, may be the only option for, for deployment. And VRFs, uh, as we all know, also support the use case if the tenant VRFs have overlapping IP addresses. So that is one of the use cases as well. And as we can see on the diagram, so benefits, uh, this fills a competitive gap for environments where VX LAN is not the primary option. Uh, and in some cases, uh, it could be simpler to deploy than VXLAN as there's, there's less configuration involved and may provide better multi-vendor interoperability given that GRE tunneling is widely used in the industry. And as we mentioned, the feature support is for the CX8325 and the 10K platforms as of this release. So as we stated already, so this feature now closes an important gap uh, with the CX1014-1000 release. You can see this is our, our configuration syntax for AOS CX with a transport VRF default. Uh, as for the AOS S switch line, there's no VRF support. Uh, and then the, all the other platforms you see here, June OS and uh, Cisco IOS and NX OS, as well as H3C, have an equivalent configuration. And I've called it out here. So you could see if you had to interoperate with these two devices, you, this is how you would uh, use the feature. And also, as you can see, you've got uh, for Cisco, the Cisco NX OS, the Cisco iOS, and also the ASR supports this feature. And on this slide, we're just going to do a configuration shallow dive representing a single tenant just to keep the configuration small so you can really focus on what needs to be present to allow this uh, functionality to be introduced. So as for the topology, as you can see here, we're just sticking with a single tenant, as you can see here. So we have the two VRS, VRF1 and VRF2, that have two different networks that we're going to connect together across the uh, underlay network using the GRE tunneling. And again, with BGP support as well for the peering. And so we've got just the two ASs here, AS65100 and 65200. And then the uh, default and then VRF1, as, as we've mentioned here. So looking a little bit further in the configuration, so you've seen this uh, on the kind of one of the first slides that we showed, but you've got the source and destination IPs here. So and then the transport VRF that you uh, specify uh, doesn't have to be default, but in this case, uh, that's what we're using is the default VRF. And so you can see the loopbacks here on each side, the 1111 and 2222. Uh, so these are distributed through OSPF, and uh, these are the loopbacks again in the underlay. And then we have the IP addresses that are configured here for the tunnels, 100.111 and 100.112. And so these represent the, uh, the configuration that you'll see down here below for the BGP peering. So we're using the tunnel interfaces to, to peer with the neighbors uh, in, in these examples here. And then we look down a little bit further here. So these are the VRF configurations here. So we've got route distinguishers here for the default VRF and VRF1, uh, as you see listed here. And so what we're doing is we're going to export from the default VRF using a route map. And so we're, gonna, we're just going to leak certain IP addresses, which uh, actually correspond to the destination IP as well as the next hop that's used to reach that network. Um, so we leak these from the default VRF into the, the corresponding tenant VRF, which in this case is VRF1, uh, using IPv4 unicast, as you see uh, in this example here. And so again, just covering this, so on uh, both sides here, so, so the 11110 represents the, the next hop network as well as the the destination loop back for the tunnel as you see as mentioned up here the set community no advertise is used in this example and it's used to prevent remote endpoints from uh, getting learned twice via uh, both bgp as well as ivrl so that that's needed so that you don't have duplicates here and then just finally the bgp configuration that you see here you know documented in the in the topology as we as we see here so we've got the BGP router ID, the neighbor addresses. As you can see, this is eBGP. It could also be I, 
BGP, it doesn't really matter. In this example, we're just using eBGP. And where the routes actually get leaked into the routing table is with this re just re OSPF route map uh, with the leak desktop uh, route map that you see listed here. And then we're redistributing the connected routes uh, for each of these VRFs. So that's it from, from a high-level perspective about what the feature offers. And stay tuned for uh, an additional update with the same feature name where we'll cover this in, in much more detail, including the demonstration where we'll have these configurations in place. And you can see how that actually works in uh, reality. And uh, thank you for joining the session. And hopefully this has been uh, helpful in learning how this feature works and uh, the gaps that it's filling uh, for our customers.